Welcome everyone, Vaishnav Mataji Samir Rashmi, Pandava Prabhu Bhagavati, Mataji Jayanti Bhai, Guntas and Dharm and Amita has just come also. Uh, Pandava Prabhu, the quality of, was poor of the Kirtan. I don't know anybody, is it my side or anybody has also got some crackling noise? Yes, me too. Yes, yes, yes. On your side, Pandava Bravo. Uh, sometimes it happens, and you do something, and then it gets all better. Huh? Anyway, uh, when you speak uh, next, maybe you can do something. I don't know. Hare Krishna. Vaishnava Mataji, can we have the Damodara Ashtakam? Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Right. Um, you just get it. It's in the chat. Well, I, I'm just using the book, if that's okay. Yes, it is the same it. words. Huh? But for yes. anybody else who wants to follow, it's in the chat. Yes. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu vyevacha patipatanam pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. <clears throat> Namami swaram sachinananda rupam lasat kundalam goku librajamanam yashoda biyulokalat gavamanam Paramastamatyanta to Drutya Gopya Rudantam Muhu Netra Yukman Majantam Karam Bhoja Yukamena Satanka Netram Muhu Swas Kampa Tri Kankha Kantha Stita Graivam Damoda Ram Bhakti Badham Iti Draksvali Labit Ananda Kunde Swagosham Nima Jantam Akya Payantam Tadi Shitani Shubhakti Jitatvam Puna Primatasta Sata Vriti Vande Varam Deva Moksham Na Moksham Vidanva Nachan Yamvani Ham Varisada Piha Idam Teva Puranatha Gopala Balam Sada Mimanasi Avirastam Kinanyay Idam Temu Kambojam Atyanta Nilet Vartam Kuntalis Nita Raktas Chagopia Mohos chumbitam bimba rakta dharammi manasi avirasta malam lakshalaibha namo deva damoda rananta vishnu prasida prabodu kajalapti magnam kripa drishti vrasjati dinam batanu Grahanisha Mamajnam Adi Akshidrishya Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ramo Hari Ramo 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 Hari Hari Kuvirat majo badha murtavya yadvat Tvaya muchi tu bhakti bajo kritacha Tatha prema bhaktin swakam me prayacha Namukshigra home isti damo dareha Namasti su damni spura tipti damni Tvadi Udarayatha Biswasya Dhamni 
नमो राधिकायदिया प्रियाय नमो नंद लीलाय दिवय तुभ्यम नमो राधिकायदियाय प्रियाय नमो नंद लीलाय दिवय तुभ्यम हरि कृष्णा हरि कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 रामो हरे रामो 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 हरे हरे जय राधा दामोदर राधा दामोदर राधे जय राधा दामोदर राधा दामोदर राधे जय नित सच्चे सुंदर जय नित सच्चे सुंदर जय नित सच्चे सुंदर जय नित सच्चे सुंदर जय राधे गोविंद जय राधे गोविंद जय राधे गोविंद जय राधे गोविंद जय गिरि गोवदान जय गिरि गोवदान जय गिरि गोवदान जय गिरि गोवदान जय तुलसी महारानी जय तुलसी महारानी जय तुलसी महारानी जय तुलसी महारानी जय न सिंह देव जय न सिंह देव जय न सिंह देव जय न सिंह देव जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद श्री श्री राधा गोविंद की जय शिला प्रभु पाद की जय श्री श्री राधा दमोदार यशोद दमोदार की जय थैंक यू वेरी मच पशन मत जी for the nice damodar ashtakam can we take turns i will start off uh, reading the translation one to the supreme lord whose form is the embodiment of eternal existence knowledge and bliss whose shark shaped earrings are swinging to and fro who is beautifully shining in the divine realm of gokula who due to the offense of breaking the pot of yogurt that his mother was churning into butter and then stealing the butter that was kept hanging from a swing is quickly running from the wooden grinding mortar in fear of mother yashoda but who has been caught from behind by her who ran after him with greater speed to that supreme lord shri damoda i offer my humble obeisances Amit, do you want to do next one? Vashana, yes, okay. <clears throat> okay. Seeing the whipping stick in his mother's hand, he is crying and rubbing, rubbing his eyes again and again with his two lotus hands. His eyes are filled with fear, and the necklace of pearls around his neck. which is marked with three lines like a unch shell is shaking because of his quick breathing due to crying to the supreme lord shri damodara whose belly is bound not with ropes but with his mother's pure love i offer my humble obeisances rashmi want to take next one seeing the whipping stick in his mother's hand he's crying and rubbing his eyes again and again with his two lotus hands his eyes are filled with fear and the necklace of pearls round his neck which is marked is done that is number 3 rashmi oh number i'm so three. sorry i'm so sorry by such childhood pastimes as this he is drowning the inhabitants of gokul in pools of ecstasy and is revealing to those devotees who are absorbed in knowledge of his supreme majesty and opulence 
that he is only conquered by devotees whose pure love is imbued with intimacy and is free from all conceptions of awe and reverence with great love again with great love i again offer my open obeisances to lord damodar hundreds and hundreds of times shami number 4 O oh Lord, although you are able to give all kinds of benedictions, I do not pray to you for the boon of impersonal liberation, nor the highest liberation of eternal life in Vaikunt, nor any other boon which may be obtained by executing the nine processes of bhakti. O oh Lord, I simply wish that this form of yours, as Bal Gopal in Vrindavan, may ever be manifest in my heart for what is the use of me of me of any other boon it's up besides this can we have pandava prabhu next number five let's see how your microphone works now number five oh sorry can i okay yes oh, yes no, go ahead a lot of all out your lotus face which is encircled by locks of soft black hair tinged with with red is kissed again and again by mother yashoda and your lips are reddish like a, the bimba fruit may may this beautiful vision of your lotus face be ever manifest in my heart thousands and thousands of other benedictions are of no use to me and how was the sound better fine excellent do you want to do number 6 you want to take pandava uh, oh supreme godhead i offer my obeisances unto you o damodar ananta o vishnu o master o my lord be pleased upon me by showering your glance of mercy upon me Deliver this poor ignorant foe who is immersed in an ocean of worldly sorrows and become visible to my eyes. Um uh, Guntas you want to give it a try number 7? Uh, I will try it. <laughs> Hare Krishna everyone. Uh first thing very short. Kirt- Kirtan was magnificent just and um performance of uh Dharma Dharastaka was divinity purified. Uh, my reading will be very poor. <laughs> Sorry. Number seven. Yes. Oh Lord, the Mother, just just as the two sounds of Kuvera, Manegriva and Nalakuvara. Were de- delivered from the course of Narada and made into great devotee by you in your form as a baby, tied with rope to a wooden grinding mortar. In the same way, please give to me your own prema bhakti. I only long for this and have a no desire for any kind of liberation hari krishna your english is quite good sir the few little things and no your english is fine you don't need to worry about that thank you varshana you want to take a last one yes certainly O oh Lord Damodara, I first of all offer my obeisances to the brilliantly effulgent rope which binds your belly. I then offer my obeisances to your belly, which is the abode of the entire universe. I humbly bow down to your most beloved Srimati Radharani, and I offer all obeisances to you, the Supreme Lord who displays unlimited pastimes. Jay. Jay, Shri Shri Radha Damodara, Yashoda Damodara, Ki Jay. Hare Krishna. Okay, let's go to our Srimad Bhagavatam. A Kartik months, everything counts many times, hundred times, thousand times, I forgot more, huh? so it's all auspicious. 
So text one, two, three, first canto, second chapter, text three is in the chat. The link is there. Now, just a word. Last time, when Alini Mataji was uh, querying that and uh, was uh, a bit confused what it means there in our last verse, Srila Prabhupada writes, any low-born person, be he a Girata, Huna, Antra, Pulinda, Pulaksha, Abhira, Shumpa, Yavana, Kasha, or even lower, can be delivered to the highest transcendental position by the mercy of Vaishnavas. So Nalini Mataji was querying, are we, are, is that caste system? Huh? I, I thought Bhagavad Gita, the, it's by guna and karma, it's not by birth. Huh? So first of all, we have to understand what these terms are, what is a Yavana? What is uh, Pulinda? And here Srila Prabhupada writes the following. Uh, the Yadu, Yadu is a Yadu dynasty. The Yavana as a Turk dynasty, the Bocha dynasty, the Mlecha dynasty, the Greek and the Paurava dynasty. Then he continues, the first class faithful men are the Vaishnavas and the Brahmanas, then the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas, then the Shutras, then the Mlechas, the Yavanas, and at last the Chandalas. The degradation of human instinct begins from the Mlechas and the Chandala state of life is the last word in human degradation. All the above terms <clears throat> mentioned in the Vedic literatures are never meant for any particular community or birth. They are different qualifications of human beings in general. There is no question of birthright or community. One can acquire the respective qualifications by one's own efforts. And thus, the son of a Vaishnava can become a Mlecha, or the son of a Chandala can become more than a Brahmana, all in terms of their association and intimate relation with the Supreme Lord. The meat eaters are generally called Mlechas, but all meat eaters are not Mlechas. Those who accept meat in terms of scriptural injunctions are not Mlechas. But those who accept meat without restrictions are called mlechas. Beef is forbidden in the scripture and the bulls and the cows are offered special protection and so on and so on. So that was just, uh, these are not castes, these are races, the Greek and uh, the Turks and uh, so in the Pulindas and so on. So these are not uh, castes at all. There is something more. <coughs> One moment. In uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the fourth canto, there is a text which explains it further. That's the wrong verse. Sorry for that. <clears throat> okay, we leave it at that. So let's go to our verses.
We look at the text. Sammy. Yes, Sammy. I put your hand up, but you're not. You didn't notice today. So I. No, I looked at my phone huh, and I didn't see your hand up. Huh? Sorry, <laughs> because of reading from my phone that is easier. Yes. Um, so I just want to say Hare Krishna, everybody, and then we'll pronounce to everyone. Um, also, um, I'd like to thank you for arranging this every week. Uh, it's uh, it's really great. Really appreciate it. I think everybody does. So I just want to say that. And also, I have a question. Does anybody know when Karthik is finishing? What's the last day of Karthik? Good question. I don't know. This time it hasn't come up in my calendar somehow. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Um, it finishes uh, on the 30th. 30th, 30th of this month. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Uh, Thank you very Vishma much. Vashana Mataji. It's Bhishma Panchaka on the last day. The Bhishma 30th. Panchaka. It usually ends with Bhishma Panchaka. Yes. Yeah. So, anything else, Amir? No. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, text three. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yasvanu bhavam agila shruti saram ekam adyatma dipam aditi tiratir shatam tamontyam samsarinam karunaya ha pa purana guyam tam vyasa sunum Upayami Gurum Muninam. Translation. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him, Sukha, Shuka, the spiritual master of all sages, the son of Yasadev, who out of his great compassion <coughs> for those gross materialists who struggle to cross over the darkest regions of material existence spoke this most confidential supplement to the cream of Vedic knowledge after having personally assimilated it by experience. <clears throat> Maybe someone can read. Uh, Samir, you want to read the puppet? In this prayer, Srila Sutta Goswami practically summarizes the complete introduction of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the natural supplementary commentary on the Vedanta Sutras. The Vedanta Sutras or the Brahma Sutras were compiled by Vyastev with a view to presenting just the cream of Vedic knowledge. Srimad Bhagavatam is the natural commentary on this cream. Srila Shukdev Goswami was a thoroughly realized master on the Vedanta Sutra, and consequently, he also personally realized the commentary. Srimad Bhagavatam, and just to show his boundless mercy upon bewildered materialistic men who want to cross completely over near science he recited for the first time this confidential knowledge there is no point in arguing that a materialistic man can be happy no materialistic creature be he the great brahma or an insignificant ant can be happy everyone tries to make a permanent plan for the happiness but everyone is baffled by the laws of material nature. Therefore, the materialistic world is called the darkest region of God's creation. 
Yet, the unhappy materialist can get out of it simply by desiring to get out. Unfortunately, they are so foolish that they do not want to escape. Therefore, they are compared to the camel who relishes thorny twigs because he likes the taste <coughs> of the twigs mixed with blood. He does not realize that it is his own blood and that his tongue is being cut by the thorns. Similarly to the materialist, his own blood is a sweet, as sweet as honey, and although he is always harassed by his own material creations, he does not wish to escape. Such materialists are called karmis. Out of hundreds of thousands of karmis, only a, only a few may feel tired of material engagement and desire to get out of the labyrinth. Such intelligent persons are called jnanis. The Vedanta Sutra is directed to such jnanis, but Srila Vastev, being the incarnation of the Supreme Lord, could foresee the misuse of the Vedanta Sutra by unscrupulous men, and therefore he personally supplemented the Vedanta Sutra with the Bhagavata Purana. It is clearly said in this Bhagavatam is the original commentary on the Brahma Sutras. Srila Vastev also instructed the Bhagavatam to his own son, Srila Shukdev Goswami, who was already at the liberated stage of transcendence. Srila Shukdev realized it personally and then explained it. By the mercy of Srila Shukdev, the Bhagavad Vedanta Sutra is available for all those sincere souls who want to get out of material existence. Srimad Bhagavatam is the one unrivaled commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. Sripad Sankacharya intentionally did not touch it because he knew what the natural commentary would be difficult for him to surpass. He wrote his he wrote his Sarika Pyasya and his so called followers depreciated the Bhagavatam as some new presentation. One should not be misled by such propaganda directed against the Bhagavatam by the Mahavayati school. From this introductory shlok the beginning student should know that Srimad Bhagavatam is the only transcendental literature meant for those who are Paramhamsas and completely freed from the material disease called malice. The Mahavedis are envious of the personality of Godhead, despite Sripad Sankacharya's admission that Narayan, the personality, of Godhead is above the material creation. The envious Mahavedi cannot have access to the Bhagavatam, but those who are really anxious to get out of this material existence may take shelter of this Bhagavatam because it is uttered by the liberated Srila Shukdev Goswami. It is the transcendental torchlight by which one can see perfectly the transcendental absolute truth, realized as Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Samir. There is a lot there in this. This is quite a longish purport. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes, therefore they are compared to the camel. Actually, that's a very interesting example, the camel. I have seen uh, in India, and anybody who has been to India or regularly goes to India, you might have seen that too. The camel is eating the thorny uh, twigs. 
on the ground or bushes and he loves that taste but that taste is actually the thorns are cutting the tongue of of camel and uh, that uh, blood mixed uh, that the camel thinks oh that tastes very nice so that is compared to the materialistic person so I've actually seen that and I was astounded the camel eating the thorny twigs and bushes. So a little bit later, Srila Prabhupada writes, such materialists are called karmis. Out of hundreds of thousands of karmis, only a few may feel tired and material engagement and for material engagement and desire to get out of the labyrinth. The Bhagavad Gita verse comes to mind. Out of hundreds of thousands, who can say? What's that Bhagavad Gita verse? We had spoken about that. We had covered that. It's quite a well-known verse. Anyone? Is it uh, the one which starts Bahunam Janaman, Jan, Bahunam Janaman Ante? No, that is after many, many births and deaths. Uh, those Gyanis, uh, they will eventually surrender to Krishna. No, that's not that verse. Out of many thousands. What's that verse? Anyone? Sami? Is it out of hundreds and thousands of, of men, one who will only only one only one will know me in truth or somebody yes. is very rare, you know, very rare. It, it said verse Manushya Namza Hasreshu Kashchit Yayatisitaye Out of many thousands among men one may endeavor for perfection. And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So that's an important Bhagavad Gita verse, 7.3. It's so rare. Now, later on, Srila Prabhupada speaks about Shankaracharya. Who is Shankaracharya? Anyone? Who is Sripa Shankaracharya? Um, isn't he the uh, guru for the um, Asuras? Um, That's Sukracharya. Oh, Sukracharya, sorry. I think I've got it wrong, sorry. Shanka. Shankaracharya is, uh, I don't know a lot of lot about him, but he is uh, one of, he is an, actually he's an uh, incarnation of Lord Shiva. Correct. Yes. And then, but he is um, he is propagating the. Uh, is it he? Is he the one who propagates the the philosophy of of uh, material philosophy that every everything is merged into one? It, what's that philosophy? Mat- is he the one of the Mayavadi philosophy? I don't know yes, about yes, it. Yes. So Mayavadis is take it, Shankaracharya as a guru, yes. Hare Krishna, is he is um, one of the first gurus for Advaita Vedanta? Yes, uh, the Mayavadi sannyasis are studying Vedanta Sutra exclusively. Yeah. said, don't touch. As Srila Prabhupada wrote here, said, don't touch the Bhagavatam. So here is something nice what Srila Prabhupada wrote. He was a devotee, Shankaracharya. He was a great devotee, but he pretended to be an atheist because he was to deal with the atheists. Unless he presented himself as an atheist, the atheist followers will not hear him. Therefore, he presented Mayavad philosophy for the time being. That's interesting, for the time being, because later after Shankaracharya came Lord Chaitanya and he turned it all over. It changed uh, with his Achinda Beda Beda Tattva. So, therefore, he 
presented Mayavad philosophy for the time being. The Mayavad philosophy cannot be accepted eternally. The eternal philosophy is Bhagavad Gita. That is the verdict. So that's quite interesting what Srila Prabhupada writes here. And uh, he wrote his Basya. Basya means, of course, commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And that's a very well known when you, uh, you will come across uh, Srila Prabhupada's writings uh, many times. Shariraka Basya. That is Shankaracharya, commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Uh, sometimes he's, even, he's called Bhagavan Shankaracharya, Lord Shiva's incarnation, for a specific purpose. Any questions or comments? Can I just ask, is Shankaracharya's um, Atma Bodha, how is that linked with Srimad Bhagavatam? Uh, Shankaracharya is Atma Bodha, what's that? Shankaracharya's work, or at least um, the offshoots of his, his works, uh, one of them is called Atma Bodha, which is okay. the knowledge of the self. Um, how, how is this? Is it linked to Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. His followers have uh, distorted his teachings. Uh, Shankaracharya, as we just have heard, uh, he has not written a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's not linked with Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, they don't touch the Srimad Bhagavatam and it will be well, very difficult for them to uh, make their own commentary, uh, the Mayavad school, uh, on uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, because it's a personal philosophy, is in every single page and almost uh, shloka and word on each page. So they cannot maintain the Mayavad stance. Samir. I just wanted to make a comment on this because it is very nice. But, but uh, it's saying that um, the materialistic world is the darkest region of God's creation. So we are in the darkest region of God's creation. And um, we're trying to make a permanent plan for happiness, which is not possible in the in this materialistic world um, to be eternally happy you know we we have to turn to Krishna so it's very very important you know because most of the time you know we're chasing happiness here and it's not it's not possible to be eternally happy we're trying to make a permanent plan for happiness here but we can't it's not possible you know but once we start and we turn towards Krishna, then everything, you know, everything is possible. We can be eternally happy, eternally blissful. Thank you, Samir. Why can we not be happy here? Everybody's trying. If we turn to Krishna, we can be happy, definitely. Yeah, if, if we, but why can we not be happy for those who don't turn to Krishna? Because um, it's um, it's not permanent happiness. What we're chasing is not actually happiness. It's a, it's an illusion. It's distorted. It's, uh, uh, it, we think what we think is happiness is not actually happiness. Yes, perverted reflection. Banyan tree comes to mind, um, and it's temporary. It's not permanent, but Krishna is permanent and the spiritual sky is permanent and spiritual activities 
in the spiritual world, they are permanent and we are permanent. In this material world, we are just like a fish out of water. We're not in our element. So people would be well advised to at least get the balance right. But the balance is completely off at the moment in this age of Kali and in our times. It's just all on the material side and there is no spiritual balance at all. So that is not very good. Yes. Yeah, also, also just 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 to mention that you know this darkest region is twenty five percent of creation, so we are in the bottom twenty five percent. So you know the seventy five percent is uh, the spiritual realm. So you know we are just in the bottom twenty five percent. So you know there is so much more there than than this materialistic level seventy five percent more. Great, how we have how how we have arrived here, <laughs> but we can make the best out of a bad bargain huh? by engaging yeah. in devotional service, and don't, don't. we all know that. Okay, if there are no any more further questions, can we move on to text four? Rashmi Mataji, you want to read text four? Usually that shloka, the important shloka, that is recited, uh, many devotees reciting that shloka just before uh, Srimad Bhagavatam class, that's regularly recited. Go on, Rashmi. We are on text four, right? Yes. Narayan Namaskritya Naram Cheva Naruttamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirrayet Translation. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances onto the personality of Godhead Narayan, onto Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, onto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and onto Srila Vyasadev, the author. Purport. All the Vedic literatures and the Purans are meant for conquering the darkest region of material existence. The living being is in the state of forgetfulness of his relation with God due to his being overly attracted to material sense gratification from time immemorial. His struggle for existence in this material world is perpetual and it is not possible for him to get out of it by making plans. If he at all wants to conquer this perpetual struggle for existence, he must re-establish his eternal relation with God. And one who wants to adopt such remedial measures must take shelter of literatures such as the Vedas and the Puranas. Foolish people say that the Purans, Puranas have no connection with the Vedas. However, the Puranas are supplementary expl explanations of the Vedas indented, intended for different types of men. All men are not equal. There are men who are conducted by the mode of goodness others who are under the mode of passion and others who are in the mode of ignorance. The Puranas are so divided that any class of men can take advantage of them and gradually regain their lost position and get out of the hard struggle for existence. Srila Sutta Goswami shows the way of chanting the Puranas. This may be followed by persons who aspire to be preachers of the Vedic literatures and the Puranas. Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Puran and it is specially meant for them who desire to get out of the material entanglement permanently. Thank you. Are there any questions to that? Shlok? Or any comments? Anyone? Who is, uh, who is Prabhuji? Who is... Uh, 
can you just ex uh, in brief say about nar narayan rishi and his mother uh, no that's not his mother Ma no. that is mother saraswati yeah na i'm sure that it comes in the in the in the incarnations uh, yes yeah it comes in there yeah is arjuna and krishna and uh, is a whole past times so, where they have been tempted with celestial uh, damsels uh, but uh, they manifested some thefts celestial damsels which were many times more beautiful huh? and cupid uh, was ashamed of tempting so they have been meditating up in the himalayas we come to that in much more detail when we come to the, and that comes very soon to the various incarnations of the lord uh, just a word on the puranas the puranas are actually uh, as shila Prabhupada explained here for different type of men not all men are equal some are in different modes so there are there are lots of puranas i don't know how many but some puranas are in the mode of ignorance huh? some puranas are in in rajaguna and some puranas are in satvaguna therefore when shila Prabhupada quotes from the puranas he is only quoting from the puranas which are acceptable huh, for vaishnavas which are in the satvaguna uh, and you, you we will see when shila Prabhupada quotes uh, from puranas it's always the same puranas again garuda purana and athasa so these are just it has to accommodate all kind of men in all kind of modes of material nature so therefore uh, vyasadev has been very careful to make sure there is something for everyone so anything or shall we move on so maybe Uh, let me just see. It's, quite, it's not such an Amar Prabhu. You want to take that next shloka and read us? Uh, that is number text number five. Sorry, just bear with me one moment. I'll just bring that up. Sorry, I've had to. Sorry, I'm in the middle of something. Is it possible someone else can? I'll, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, let me read the next one. Sorry. Nalini <laughs> Madhachi, you want to take the shloka number five? Welcome back, anyway. Prabhuji. Yeah, Text I'll do number that. Five. Yeah, I'll do that, Prabhuji. Yeah, just let me get to it. Bear with me. Mm, five, 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 five. Really there, right, yeah. Manuya sadhu prastoham. Mu, mu, munaya. Oh, Munaya sadhu prastoham. Bhavadbir lok mangalam. Yatkrata krishna sambrasano. Yanatma subrat siddhati. Uh, that is very well known. Yadma Suprasitati, and uh, actually Savai Pumsam Paro Dharma, that's the next verse where Yayatma Suprasitati comes. Okay, a translation. Oh, sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna, and so are the relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. The purport by Srila Prabhupada. Since since it has been stated here herein before that in the Bhagavatam the absolute truth is to be known, the questions of the sages of Namisaranya are proper and just because they pertain to Krishna, who is the supreme personality of Godhood, God, Godhead, the absolute truth. In Bhagavatam 1515, 15, 
the personality of Godhead says that in all the Vedas there is nothing but the urge for searching after him, Lord Krishna. Thus the questions that pertain to Krishna are the sum and substance of all the Vedic inquiries. The whole world is full of questions and answers. The birds, beasts and men are all busy in the matter of perpetual questions and answers. In the morning, the birds in the nest become busy with questions and answers and in the evening also the same birds come back and again become busy with questions and answers. The human being, unless he is fast asleep at night, is busy with questions and answers. The businessmen in the market are busy with questions and answers and also the lawyers in the court and the students in the schools and colleges. The legislatures in the parliament are also busy with questions and answers and the politicians and the press representatives are all busy with questions and answers. Although they go on making such questions and answers for their whole lives, they are not at all satisfied. Satisfaction of the soul can only be obtained by questions and answers on the subject of Krishna. Krishna is our most intimate master, friend, father or son and object of conjugal love. Forgetting Krishna, we have created so many objects of questions and answers, but none of them are able to give us complete satisfaction. All things but Krishna give temporary satisfaction only. So if we are to have complete satisfaction, we must take to the questions and answers about Krishna. We cannot live for a moment without being questioned or without giving answers because the Shri Bhagavatam deals with questions and answers that are related to Lord Krishna. We can derive the highest satisfaction only by reading and hearing this transcendental literature. One should learn the Srimad Bhagavatam and make an all-around solution to all problems pertaining to social, political or religious matters. Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna are the sum total of all things. Uh, hey. Prabhuji, one question. You know, it, it says that all these people uh, are uh, giving, I mean, asking questions and answers. Mm. But shouldn't they be doing that if we are living in a material world also i mean we also uh, studying the bhagavat git bhagavatam and uh, asking questions and answers there but also in our uh, other life i mean we can't get away from material life because we are born in there but uh, so what is wrong in asking questions and answers i mean i'm a bit confused here prabhuji okay thank you very much Thank you, anyone Prabhu. wants anyone wants to answer that question of Nalini Mataji? Sami. I think I think what's happening here is that uh, because we are obviously reading and studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, we are asking questions and answers. But uh, we are actually searching for the absolute truth, whereas, um, you know, uh, what, it, what it's saying in this page is that people are all very busy asking questions and answers, but to no avail. So even they get the example Prabhupada is giving of for the birds. The birds are coming in the morning, they're tweeting and they're asking questions and answers. So in the evening they come and they ask questions and answers. Similarly, people who are, who are not turned to Krishna, who haven't turned to Krishna, they are just busy doing that the same as what the birds are doing. They're just asking questions and answers, questions and answers. But they don't have any ultimate goal of getting out of this material world. So they're just busy, busy asking questions and answers but they don't have that ultimate goal. So yes, you're right. You can, you know, obviously, if you're living in the materialistic world, you do need to ask questions. You, you need to go work. You need to maintain the body. But the difference between us and those are that we we we, we should really know the ultimate goal, uh, which is Krishna. So oh, I don't know what's going on here, but... Uh, 
uh, yeah, we should should we shouldn't be like uh, animals because we have a human form of life. So uh, we should use this human form of life to to inquire and ask questions regarding why we are here, where are we going to go, you know, um, so the the actual ultimate uh, questions and answers, and base our questions and answers around Krishna. Thank you, Jamia. Very yeah. nice explanation. So, also, question Prabhuji, and answers. I have something to add, Prabhuji, to Nalini Mataji's question. Yes. The you know, see in 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 this material world, when we ask the neither the person asking the question is perfect, neither the person answering is perfect. So the so you go to a doctor and you say, should I eat? Should I drink coffee? So the one day the doctor will tell you, no, no, don't drink coffee. It's not good for your heart. Or one day he will tell you, don't eat margarine. After six months, this answer will change. He will say, no, no, margarine is good for your heart. Coffee is also good for your heart. So the answers are also not absolute. They are continuously changing. There is so much change happening. The questions are also, the person asking the question is also imperfect. And the scientists and whoever else is answering, he's, all these answers are very relative. But Srimad Bhagavatam, the question on questions asked is also perfect people. And the person who answered was also self-realized. So the knowledge was perfect. It was absolute, never to be changed. Thank you, Rashmi Mataji. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, that is certainly true. And the point made here uh, clearly is uh, said if we are only asking questions and uh, receiving answers about material uh, material things, then we'll never be really truly satisfied. So we may need to answer uh, some material questions, but actually we need to engage as well. Again, it's all about balance. We need to as well engage in spiritual questions and answers like Srimad Bhagavatam to be truly satisfied. And that is a way out of this material entanglement. Does it make sense, Nalini Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji. I have got another question. You know, Samir Prabhuji said that we are animals, right? I mean, um, if we are living like animals, then we would not be able to understand or appreciate the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam. I, 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 I differ, differ with him here in the sense that we are human beings with a lot of animal instincts, but also God has given us intelligence and brains to think and make that choice to study the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam to gain more knowledge about the, the Lord. So, okay. I, dif I differ a bit. Sorry, sorry, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Uh, the question arises, what makes us different to the animals? Samir. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I wasn't saying you're animals. I'm saying the one people who haven't actually turned to Krishna, the people who haven't, um, who haven't uh, started reading Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, they they are non different to animals. Prabhupada says that that they all they do is obviously sleep, mate, eat and defend, and the animal does the same thing. So I'm not referring to you, because obviously you have uh, your your here yeah, you're reading the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavatam, maybe chanting. I I don't know, but you've turned to Krishna, so. I'm talking about the people who are, who haven't uh, turned to the Lord in one form or another. They are none different. That's why the example of the birds was given, that the birds are asking questions and answers. Similarly, human beings are doing this. The ones who haven't turned to the Lord, they are none different to animals. That's what I was but, saying. Thank can you, I add Samir. something here, Prabhupada? Can I add here something, Prabhuji? You know, like the people who are not engaged in studying the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, we say that they are uh, following animal life, but they could at some stage in their life 
turn to Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and start studying about Lord Krishna. Yes, so, if we help them and turn them yes, exactly. towards Lord so, Krishna, towards God, and then they can pick up that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm 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 still not very happy about this animal concept, you know, because that is Srila, that Srila Prabhupada saying if someone is not caring about God, he is just like an animal, or like like uh, um, uh, Samir just said, uh, if we yeah. just eating, sleeping. Uh, fighting and mating, uh, that the animals also doing that. So the yeah. human life is meant to go beyond eating, sleeping, sex life and fighting. Uh. But then they, they become humans. Uh. They would, they would, yeah, they could turn to Krishna at some stage in their life, isn't it? Well, they have to, yes, of course. They have to ask uh, the question, anyone a bit more intelligent, uh, because, I mean, there's an ev evolutionary, uh, evolutionary, uh, Becoming from uh, different bodies, uh, even in the animal kingdom, but in the human form of life, we need to. We have arrived now in the human form of life, and we need to ask question: Where do I come from? Where will I go after? What is the purpose of life? Huh? So these questions deeper, not just uh, working hard for sense gratification and enjoying the senses. That the animals do that also. So human uh, being qualifies a, uh, a little bit more. It's not just the human form. There are people who have a human form, but uh, their consciousness is still in the animal kingdom. But yes, of course, they can have a chance by the mercy of the devotees and those uh, who help them progress further than say, say, getting evolved, asking questions, uh, not only about material things, but asking questions about the purpose of life. Many, many people don't think there is a purpose to human life, or they think the purpose of human life, uh, oh, the purpose is just to have a good time, just to go to the pub, uh, just to drink, to eat, uh, and uh, that's all. So, Prabhu, that is nicely explained by uh, Rashmi Mataji and Samir Prabhuji and yourself. Um, I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you for being happy. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita 15.15, the personality of God says that in all the Veda, there is nothing but the urge for searching after him, Lord Krishna. 1515. What's that? What verse is that? Anyone? 1515. One of the 108 key verses. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. So here Krishna says, I am. I am to be known. The purpose of the Vedas is to know me. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. So Krishna is intimately connected with the Vedas. He is the compiler of the Vedas in his incarnation as Veda Vyas. And I am the knower of the Vedas. So that is that verse 1515 from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, is there anything else? Yes. Later on, Srila Prabhupada says, Krishna is our most intimate master and friend, father, son, and so on. Any, any verse of Bhagavad Gita comes to mind? Uh, Rashmi, you mentioned it before, did you? What verse comes to mind? Krishna is a friend. Pandava, you are so quiet. Bhagavati Mataji. Uh, the 
Golden Golden verse from last verse from fifth chapter. Yes. Uh, yes. The peace formula. Yes. Whoever knows me as the uh, proprietor of all the planets, uh, the one who uh, accepts all the offerings and knows me as the ultimate friend, achieves peace. From Japan. Do you know the Sanskrit by chance? I have to look up just a moment because I'm not so good, unfortunately, with the memory. So the Bhaktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Sukhritam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Mam Shanti Mrichati. Translation. Um. Second, because they have different, different, different books. Five twenty nine. Yes, a person who is fully conscious of me knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. Great, fantastic, wonderful. The peace formula. That uh, is uh, also one of the 108 key verses, Bhaktaram Yagyata Pasam. There is a line, Suridam Sarva Bhutanam. Srila uh, Prabhupada writes in one of his lectures, he's a best friend of everyone. Rashmi, you will know, he said, Surit. That is, uh, Sanskrit has quite a number of terms for friend. And uh, it's such a rich language. Uh, uh, I think even five types of uh, friends are existing and uh, different Sanskrit words for each different friend and each type of friend is a different relationship as well. So here we have Surit. He's the best friend of everyone. He is not friend only of human society. That's also quite significant. Krishna is not only friend of human society, he's friend of the animal society. Amit, that sounds great, huh? Krishna is friend of the animal society because every living entity is God's son. How we can be otherwise treating men in some way and animal in another way? No, God is actually perfect friend of all living entities. So, Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Bhutanam, living entities, Sarva, all living entities. So, anything else to set fifth verse? Can I add something? Yes, please. I don't know why my hand just disappeared, the palm disappeared, but uh, um, since we are discussing, there is one very uh, Nice verse, uh, of course, it's much farther in 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, but it caught my attention uh, quite long ago, and it's very insignific significant. Um, the whole, it's 11th canto, chapter 9, uh, uh, it's about the uh, a Brahmin, Avanti Brahmin, who explains his how he achieved perfection, and uh, he is um, he's giving very nice two 
verses which are quite applicable to to on this this uh, verse we're just discussing and here is the the text 28 um the supreme personality of godhead expanding his own potency maya shakti created innumerable species of life to uh, to house the conditioned souls Yet, by creating the forms of trees, reptiles, animals, birds, snakes, and so on, the Lord was not satisfied with his heart, within his heart. Then he created human life, which offers the conditioned soul sufficient intelligence to perceive the absolute truth, and then became pleased. In Text 29, after many, many births and deaths, one achieves the rare human form of life, which, although temporary, affords one the opportunity to attain the highest perfection. Thus, a sober human being should quickly endeavor for the ultimate perfection of life, as long as his body, which is always subject to death, has not fallen down and died. After all, Sense gratification is available even in in the most abominable species of life, whereas Krishna consciousness is possibly only for a human being. So, um, anyway, I I can post this. You can, if you, if somebody wants. Yes, yes, that's great. uh, great. But this this verse uh, was used. Um, many times by different uh, preachers, and and it's it's really kind of summary and um, uh, practical way of of expressing how uh, human life uh, is really important for us, and and of course this uh, Prabhupada's expression about uh, animal comparing uh, us or human beings to to animals is quite shocking uh, I also had the same maybe I'm repeating myself but I I had the same kind of um, cold shower when I started reading Prabhupada's books <laughs> because uh, <laughs> because this western culture is um kind of pampered us in this understanding that we are so great and we are human, we are the best and so on. So in certain way, Vedic literature confirms his t- this, that we are really the great uh, species. But the difference is that uh, the Vedas and, and Acharyas are uh, reminding us what is the greatness of, of our uh, form of life. It's not about those animalistic instincts and following them or and polishing them up to the um, max, but uh, it's about um, reviving our spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness, which is of only possible for a human being. And, uh, when, and when one has this uh, golden opportunity, but doesn't uh, have any interest in spiritual elevation, he is the, the, the greatest loser. So, of course, it's a very difficult task for for devotees and, and acharyas to to awaken in, in human beings that uh, that thirst for spiritual upliftment, because. Um, because again, we, the human being is, or that that soul who is housed in this uh, body, has so much attachment because of these four principles of life, uh, because he repeated them in so many other forms, and that's why it's so hard sometimes to to change it for spiritual uh, taste. So this, the, these two verses, um, they just kind of remind, especially for devotees, uh, as how important is our situation. And when we, and when we even 
um, study more and uh, connect with um, uh, Lord Chaitanya's teaching, then when, when we understand how Krishna consciousness is very rare, uh, because <clears throat> uh, that comes from uh, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, that Krishna appears only once in a day of Brahma, and only after his disappearance, he comes at, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to offer Krishna Prema. So when we when we see the numbers, um, if somebody is more anal anal analytical about uh, so many things and he looks for some deeper conviction for spiritual life, then uh, then that's the great uh, inspiration also. It's like uh, only once in a day Brahma, this easy or the easiest uh, uh, way of Krishna consciousness is offered to us. And it's it's uh, just, Krishna was just only 5,000 years ago <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya was only 500 years ago. That's why this this message is still very fresh and vibrant. So, but then then we can also see the contrast how uh, how life outside uh, of Krishna consciousness or association with devotees is still um, focused on on these animalistic uh, activities. So. These are kind of few loose thoughts I could just share. Thank you very thank much, Pandora. Wonderful insight, and uh, thank you for posting this uh, uh, two verses, the reference in the chat. You just spoke of the day of Brahma. We just spoke the other uh, session about just a quick reminder uh, that the four yugas, Kali, Tva, Paratreta, Satya, Together, they come to 4,320,000 earthly years. And thousands of these uh, is a kalpa. Thousands of these together for yugas is a kalpa, a day of Brahma. And as long is his night and his month is 30 days and uh, 12 months. Uh, and a hundred years, Lord Brahma, uh, is his life expectancy. So we coming to Brahma's life, 311 trillion and 40 billion years is the life of Lord Brahma. And you spoke of a day of Lord Brahma. Uh, it's a four yugas, 4,320,000 times a thousand. That is his day. And the same is his night. So, indeed, a very rare opportunity to come to this human form of life and to have been in contact with Krishna consciousness, being in contact with that knowledge. Uh, we have not always been in contact with that knowledge in our previous lives. Maybe not. You know, we have come to that position. And Lord Chaitanya is not appearing in in every Kali Yuga. There is a certain schedule when Lord Chaitanya actually appears. So only 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna walked his planet eh, with all his dharma in Vrindavan and so on. And then 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna again walked in Mayapur Navadvip and also South India. And just recently, some 40 years back, Srila Prabhupada and before Srila Bhakti Siddha and the Gogi Shodas Babaji and uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, so many great, uh, very potent Acharyas have been here. So we are fortunate we should pick up this Krishna consciousness by hook and by crook and by all means, because we don't know what the future holds. We don't know... Uh, where our life is really going. So now it's an opportunity to take to it 
and we should take full advantage. And we do by meeting here two times a week, we linking up with that. Okay, let's move on. Amar, are you ready to read text six? Yes, sure. So text six. Save um sam paro dharma yato bhaktir adok saje ahai dukhi apratihata yai atma supra siddhati Translation is the supreme occupation, Dharma, for all humanity is that by which man can attain to loving devotional service and to transcendental Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated, uninterrupted, to completely satisfy the self. Purport. In this statement, Sri Sutta Goswami answers the first question of the sages of uh, Name is Saranya. The sages asked him to summarize the whole range of revealed scriptures and present uh, the most essential part so that the fallen people or the people in general might easily take up to it, to take it up. The Vedas prescribe two different types of occupation for the human being. One is called the Pravritti Murga, Marga or the path of sense enjoyment, and the other is called the Nivriti Marga, or the path of renunciation. The path of enjoyment is inferior, and the path of sacrifice for the supreme cause is superior. The material existence of the living end, uh, being is diseased condition of actual life. Actual life is spiritual existence, or Brahma Buddha, existence where life is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. Material existence is temporary, illusory, and full of miseries. There's no happiness uh, at all. There is just a futile attempt to get rid of the miseries, and temporary cessation of the miseries is falsely called happiness. Therefore, the path of progressive material enjoyment, which is temporary, miserable, and illusory, is inferior. But devotional service to the Supreme Lord, which leads one to eternal blissful and all uh, cognizant life, is, is called the superior quality of occupation. It's sometimes polluted when mixed, uh, when mixed with the interior inferior quality. For example, ad adoption of devotional service for the material gain is certainly an obstruction to the progressive path of re uh, renunciation. Renunciation or the abnegation of uh, for ultimate good is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the disease condition of life. Such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of disease and increases its duration. Therefore, devotional service to the Lord must be pure in quality, i.e. without the least desire for material enjoyment. One should therefore accept the superior quality of occupation in the form of devotional service of the Lord without any tinge of unnecessary desire, fruitive action, and philosophical speculation. This alone can lead one to per uh, perpetual solace in his service. We have purposely denoted dharma as occupation because the root meaning of the word dharma is that which sustains one's existence. A living being's sustenance of existence is to coordinate his activities with his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord Krishna. Krishna is the central pivot of living uh, beings and he is the all-attractive living entity or eternal form amongst all other living beings or eternal forms. Each and every living uh, being has his eternal form in the spiritual existence and Krishna is the eternal attraction. For all of them, Krishna is the complete whole and everything else is his part and parcel. The relation is one of the servant and the served. It is transcendental and 
is completely distinct from our experience in material existence. This relation of the servant of servant and the served is the most con, uh, congenial part of intimacy. One can realize it as devotional service progresses. Everyone should engage himself in that in that transcendent, uh, transcendental loving service of the Lord, even in the present conditional state of material existence. That will event, that will gradually give one the clue to actual life and please him to complete satisfaction. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. There is quite a lot there. Let's have a closer look. Uh, Praviti mark, nivriti mark. The two distinctions are given here. The path of sense enjoyment, praviti mark, and the path of renunciation or sacrifice, nivriti mark. Srila Prabhupada calls it, I mean, renunciation that sounds like, why do we all have become sannyasis? So Srila Prabhupada is cushioning said a little bit and says uh, the path of sacrifice very important before previously we heard said some leches uh, not all meat eaters are called leches because those who uh, uh, consuming meat uh, in connection with sacrifice there is a distinction there so here also uh, the path of sacrifice. Now here is mentioned actual life is spiritual existence of Brahma Buddha. What Bhagavad Gita verse is said? We have many times covered that verse. And it's Ben's uh, favorite, one of his favorite verses. and. Actually, also a favorite verse of mine. What what's that verse? Anyone? Bhagavati Mataji? Rashmi? Spiritual existence or Brahma Buddha existence, Brahma which is Ashur. Is that the verse? The one? Yes, of course. Yes. It is. What's the translation? What's the translation? Let me find it. Unless you have it. One who is One just who is transcendentally just... situated at once realizes the supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments he never... or desires to have anything. Science. He's equally disposed equally. towards every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. So basically, that's a liberated platform, free from the modes of nature, no hankering, no lamenting, always satisfied. And Srila Prabhupada quotes here in brackets, Srimad Bhagavatam 4, 30, 20. And I have a reference to that as well. That is always engaging, that's a translation of that verse, always engaging in the activities of devotional service, devotees feel ever increasingly fresh and new in all their activities. Isn't that wonderful? Everybody's looking for that freshness and newness. Therefore, people always want to buy something new, new models, the new, the new, the new, the freshness, but they still don't get satisfaction. So all knower, the super soul within the heart of the devotee makes everything increasingly fresh. This is known as a Brahma, Brahman position by the advocates of the absolute truth. In such a liberated stage, Brahma Buddha, one is never bewildered. 
nor does one lament or become unnecessarily jubilant. This is due to the Brahma Buddha situation. So, Krishna in the heart, he makes everything fresh and new. That is absolutely beautiful described here. So, uh, let me just go back to that verse. Which verse we, we were just in? What was the verse we had? One, two, six. I think it was six, yeah. 1.2.6 1, 2, I lost my place There were a few other points If anybody in the meantime has any uh, question or comment If not, I have a question. There is just a futile attempt to get rid of the miseries and temporary cessation of misery is falsely called happiness. Uh, there is a nice example. Uh, people take the cessation, the stopping of misery as happiness. Uh, take an example. You're doing some DIY at home and you have to hammer a nail in the wall and uh, your finger, your thumb is in the way and you hit your thumb instead of the nail. Can happen, has happened and uh, you hit with a hammer your thumb and it hurts very much. What would you do? Put it in cold water and you find relief and you think you're happy. <laughs> so the, the stopping of the misery is sometimes taken as happiness because people don't know what is happiness. They have no experience of happiness. People think when when COVID uh, lockdown stops on 2nd December, oh, that is happiness. It's just the stopping of the misery, really. So happiness is much more than that. So that is very nicely expressed here. A bit later, Srila Prabhupada writes, such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of disease and increases its duration. What does that mean? Sense enjoyment only aggravates symptoms of disease and it increases its duration. How do we understand that? What does that mean? Does it mean that we keep seeking permanence? Samir, and oh, you hold on, stop. Samir. I have to unplug my microphone, and it happens regularly after an hour. Of, give me a second. Okay, carry on. So, does it mean that we are under the illusion that? everything is permanent and um, because we think that everything is permanent we, we keep making the same mistake whereas actually everything is just temporary things just come and go um, yes but uh, the illusion makes us think that it's it's permanent is that, yes is that on the right, right track yes certainly that is true Samir what do you say do you have your hands up yeah it's um on the, on the right track there but, um, you see what happens is that if uh, it's like adding fuel to the fire oh. so if, if we're doing something um, um, 
we we think it's the right thing to do, so we keep on doing it. So it's adding fuel. So when we add fuel to the fire, the fire increases more and more. So the more we try and enjoy the material world, the more we're adding fuel to that, and the more we think that's where we belong. So we do it more and more, and it makes it worse and worse, and it increases our duration because we come back again and again in this into the material world because well, we thank haven't... you that's a wonderful example huh very nice example huh? we we adding fuel to the fire and the fire is actually burning more so we engaging in sense gratification and actually our lusty desires are increasing not decreasing and yes we staying in this material world again and again and again. Yeah, and just and just to add to Samira's example, that lovely, lovely example, but also the smoke that comes from that fire clouds our vision to even start to even begin to comprehend what reality actually is, that we can't see past that. And of course, if we're adding more fuel to it, there'll be more smoke, which clouds our vision. Yes, very nice. And Bhagavad Gita, there is a verse which speaks uh, as a living entity is covered. Huh? Uh, like smoke, uh, like covered, uh, like the embryo in the womb, and so on. Yes, good, wonderful. So, one more thing. Uh, each and every living being has his eternal form in the spiritual existence, and Krishna is the eternal attraction for all of them. So we all have our spiritual original forms in the spiritual world and we developing we that is our Swarup our Swarup city and there is a nice example you have maybe seen a painting with Lord Narayan and uh, Vaikunda Basis serving him male and female riding in their airplanes so in the vaikunda male and female are in close contact but due to the strong attraction to the lord the mutual bodily attraction is absent so we can experience the same if we engaging in Krishna consciousness, any material desires for sense gratification uh, vanquish uh, quite quickly. If our focus is on the Lord of Vaikuntha, if our focus is on Krishna, there is no room for material desires. I think we stop here, we're coming almost to nine o'clock. We have done such shloka, and we well, carry on. Prabhuji, yes, just, Amma. just sorry, sorry, just to finalize, just coming back to this shloka um, is very quickly. Um, after this shloka mentions the supreme uh, occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain loving devotional service unto the transcendental Lord. This one, unless I'm unless I'm mistaken, is this is this very similar to the shloka in the Bhagavad Gita, which states that uh, Vishnu had sent forth uh, all demigods. I, unfortunately, I don't have it to hand at the moment. But I'm sacrifice, just going yes. Yes, yeah, sacrifice. Basically sent forth all demigods and all living non living entities uh, in this world uh, just basically uh, to come back to me. Well, that said Bhagavad Gita Shloka explains the absolutely necessity of sacrifice. Hmm? Uh, our life must be organized in such a way that we do some sacrifice for a higher purpose, not sacrifice for material sense gratification. So, <sighs> I don't see it directly linked with. Uh, can you say that first part of your Amma, of your 
What you just said. So, so um, what, what I read was a Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.6. Yeah. Um, the supreme occupation, Dharma, for all yes. humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendental Lord. Yes, yes. So that is, that is a supreme Dharma if we awaken our Krishna consciousness and uh, our love for Krishna. Yes, of course. You have to go, Vashana. Is that what you say? We do a bit of kirtan in a minute, up till we almost nine o'clock. Yes, of course, he sacrifice. Uh, uh, that is also getting us to that supreme dharma of developing our loving devotional service. So in that way, these verses are linked. Yes, there are many verses linked to that in Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. I think we have to stop. Otherwise, we're running, uh, we're going till midnight and then the word is starting dropping out. Let's do a little bit of kirtan to finish off the evening. It has been beautiful. Nice reading. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Krishna Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Jaya Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Jaya Radha Gokula Nanda Radha Gokula Nanda Radha Radha Gokula Nanda Radha Gokula Nanda Radha Jaya Radha London is Radha London is Radha 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 Jaya Radha Gopinatha Radha Gopinatha Radha Radha Gopinatha Radha Gopinatha Radha Jaya Radha Gopinda Chi Radha Gopinda Chi Radha Jaya Radha Gopinda Chi Radha Gopinda Chi Radha Jaya Radha Rama Narada Rama Narada Radha Rama Narada Rama Narada Jai Radha Damodar Radha Damodar Radha Jai Radha Damodar Radha Shyam Sundarata Shyam Sundarata Radha Shyam Sundarata Shyam Sundarata Jaya Radhe Jaya Radhe Jaya Radhe Jaya Jaya Shri Radhe Jaya Radhe Krishna Balaram, oh Krishna Balaram, oh Krishna Balaram, Jai Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jai Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jai Krishna Balaram, Jai Giri Govardhan, Jai Giri Govardhan, Jai Giri Govardhan, Jai Giri Govardhan. Jaya Giri Govardhan, Giri Govardhan, Jaya Giri Govardhan, Jaya Giri Govardhan. Nittai Satchi Sundar, Nittai Satchi Sundar, Nittai Satchi Sundar, Jaya Nittai Satchi Sundar, Jaya Nittai Satchi Sundar, Nittai Satchi Sundar, Nittai Satchi Sundar, Nittai Satchi Sundar. Bravo pa Bravo pa Bravo pa Jai Bravo pa Jai Bravo pa Bravo pa Bravo pa Shri Bravo pa Jai Guru De Guru De Guru De Jai Guru De Jai Jai Vancha Kalpa Rubyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Yaiva Cha Patitana Pavlevya Vaishnava Vedyunamo Nama 
Quancia calpa terubia sta, gripa sin terubia e mancia, partita nam pavane, quaisna vecchio, namo namaha, nande koti quaisna Let us offer our most respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, so just like the Sayatris and their full of compassion to the fallen and conditioned souls. Hare Krishna. Thank you everyone for coming tonight and uh, engaging in our supreme Dharma, the Vaipum Samparo Dharma, in the Paro Dharma. Dharma, in the highest Dharma of hearing and Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, answers and questions and answers and questions, but not just about food and sex and <laughs> so many material. No, about Krishna. And so we all feel enlivened. Thank you, Ama, Amit, Dharm. Guntas Jayanti Bhai Pandava Prabhu Bhagavati Mataji Samir. And Rashmi has already left and Vashana has left. Thank you very much. We'll see. We come together again on Wednesday. And now it's Prasadam time. Not together, not yet, but individually, maybe Hare Krishna, a bit late. Thank you. Hare Krishna, see you on Wednesday.